What's up, I'm Kyle, and this is episode 32 of the Vervet Forest. On this episode, Jeffrey and Crystal head over to the Coco Troop intro enclosure. Trisha joins the boys over in the Gizmo Troop intro enclosure. The Goliath babies, Joby, Dee Dee, and Jerry finally head out into the troop with their foster mom, Mrs. Gold. We receive a new orphan baby monkey named Lou. Kobe, the ex-pet, heads over to the D&D intro enclosure. And then Janet gets an update and the Sov babies finally make their way out into the troop for real this time. The love affair between Trisha and Jeffrey has finally come to an end, and it's all Crystal's fault. Well, not really, but you know. Hi. Where one goes, the other will follow. What did you see his little hand? And he put his hand on my hand. He's like, no, <laughs> no, thank you. Jeffrey and Crystal left Disneyland and they headed over to the Coco Troop intro enclosure. Hello, you two. Hi, package deal babies. Oh, hi. Where are you? Look, that's Casanova. She could be your mum. And Kara, you've gotten plenty. Baby time, you should go away now. <laughs> what? What? The one at the door is like <laughs> obsessed with the babies. What's going on, little man? The two babies were a little unsettled by their new enclosure, but a ton of females showed up at the fence to check them out, and even Jolie and Peggy stopped by to say hi. Good. The two babies enjoyed exploring their new digs until a male vervet walked by outside of the fence and they both got a little worried. Don't you worry, I got you back. Aww. You're peeing on the thing. It's all right, boys are not that bad. Aww. They're not that great either. But... but after he left, everything went back to normal. And Crystal and Jeffrey both seemed pretty pleased to be in their new home. Yeah. Brownie, you're too old to have a baby. Hi. It might break her. Trisha joined Benjamin, Dylan, and Piwaket over in the Gizmo Troop intro enclosure. <laughs> Trisha had absolutely no problem assimilating into life with the three boys. and she took very quickly to the adoration of her foster mothers. Hello, Dylan.
I know it's been a while since I've updated you on Jerry, Joby, and Dee Dee who were over in Goliath Troop, but they finally had their big day. Yeah, we're trying to get a sale. Oh, okay. So they've got three, so they need someone else to speak <laughs> one up, at least. Oh my god. <laughs> Halo would be great. Halo, like Halo. Yeah, she, you know, there are potential mum paint, they can have one. You know, Shninky, if she knows you're going out, she might have one. Yeah. First out the door was Colleen and Dee Dee. Once outside, Colleen stopped for a quick grooming session with Mandy, and then they headed off into the bush. But Dee Dee didn't stick with Colleen for very long. She headed back over to the intro enclosure fence and paced back and forth by the door. She was probably wondering why the heck Mrs. Gold and all of her friends were still inside the intro enclosure when she was out here with all the big monkeys. Staff member Nellie then opened up the door. Mrs. Gold scooped Jerry up onto her belly and Joby and Dee Dee followed them close behind as they ran out into the main enclosure. Once out into the bush, Mrs. Gold and the babies took a break. Angelica came over and gave Dee Dee a big hug. They then ran deeper into the bush and were joined by some of the juveniles. Everyone was very happy, except perhaps Mrs. Gold's back. No matter how hard the other females tried to interact with the babies, Jerry, Joby, and Dee Dee stuck to Mrs. Gold like glue. Jerry on the belly, Dee Dee on the back, and Joby trailing close behind. About a day after the release, we received a new orphan baby vervet monkey. She has been named Lou. I like her patchy s <laughs> Have you seen her sides yet? No, this is the first time I've seen her. Gets better. Oh yeah, it does. Hello, little patchy lady. It was the only way to get the grass seeds out and they were making her bleed. That's what Bernie said. That's exciting. What's wrong with her eyes? Cause she got beaten up. She got beaten she got up. She got a fight and she lost. Oh man, with I a baboon. The fight was with a rock and a small child. Lou was found at a local garbage dump, and she was lying beside her dead mother, while a group of kids stood around throwing stones at them. Luckily, some compassionate people stepped in, and yelled at the kids, grabbed the monkey, and called us up. In order to clear up space for Lou in the baby cabin, we moved Kobe to the D&D intro enclosure. After the whole debacle last time with Conjo, we decided to take a different approach. All right, Baba, let's do it. We let the moms out of the intro enclosure and sanctuary manager Megan took Kobe into the airlock. Sarah just said she can't finish bottom section because the bandits are all freaking out and even Godfrey told her not to come near. It's like, good. Keep that means they're down there. But Kobe did not want to let go of Megan. Mm -hmm. Reba, hey! Hey! Kobe! 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 
Bad timing. Do you want to maybe bring him in completely, hand him to me to the fence? Yeah, and then I can get over my doorstep. Hey, Boopa, come here. She finally got him into the enclosure, Tori distracted him on the fence, and then Megan snuck back out of the gate. It's got a little bit of background music. Merlin and Conjo came over to say hi, but Kobe wanted nothing to do with them. You guys mind just stepping back a little bit, please? Thanks. Merlin's such a good monkey friend. Kobe would not stop pacing and searching for a way out. The boys did their best with Kobe, but he managed to keep them at a distance. Nellie then let foster mom Shanae and Phyllis back into the intro enclosure. Shanae and Phyllis had a brief moment of confusion where they couldn't decide who was going to groom whom. You're waving at them. Oh. <laughs> While I was filming Shanae and Phyllis grooming each other, Kanjo took a turn trying to play with Kobe. And he was kind of successful, and afterward he had a lot to say about it. Hello. Hi. Look, I got a new friend. Did you see him? He's up there. You should see him. He's my friend. He's really cool. <laughs> Hey, Timmy, come and see my cool friend. After this, Kobe calmed down a bit and let the other boys approach him, but his demeanor was still a little bit more aggressive than playful. If you ask him, should probably say I'm We told Josie you wouldn't be a bully. Anger in that face. Yeah, That's totally. A total play face. The slapping is a little and aggressive. I'm not sure about this. Oh. I can't decide whether I want to beat you up or play with you. Oh, Timothy. Alright, he's holding his own. Yeah, he's fine. He's got a pole to hide behind. <laughs> he's gonna run away to mom. This dude's got a tough life ahead of him. I feel my toes burning off. Despite Kobe's aggressive playing with the boys, he was not ready to meet the moms. It'll take some time for Kobe to calm down, but considering the situation, he's doing better than most at this point. And I personally would contribute that to Merlin. I'm really amazed at how easily these past two ex-pets, Kanjo and Kobe, have just assimilated into this little family life. And I think it's Merlin and Timothy. I think those two guys have been through so much in their lives, especially Merlin, that like, they just have this incredibly calm, calming demeanor. And I think it does a lot for the babies. You're a bikini. Yeah, it did. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on right now? <laughs> the best part is he's also doing a slow, awkward lick. <laughs> <laughs> Kobe's like, Ooh, I kind of want to get in on this. Yeah, what? <laughs> We had another big release as well. The Sav babies, Nora and Shemesh, finally got to make it out into the troop with their foster moms, Holly and Priya. And this time it was legitimate. In the morning, Acorn and some friends sat at the fence waiting expectantly. She's cute, cool as a kitten. Yeah. When it was time to go, the babies and the moms left the enclosure without any hesitation. I'm going in, I'm going out. Easiest 
but right off the bat, Acorn, the alpha female, was following the moms a little too close for comfort. <laughs> It wasn't too long before a fight broke out and Nora was actually stolen from Holly by Acorn. Despite the fact that Acorn never wanted to come into the intro enclosure, it seems she actually did want a baby. Priya managed to hang on to Shemesh and she hid in the bushes. But once Acorn had Nora all to herself up in a tree, she completely lost interest in the baby. She's been trying real hard. Poor Nora was up in that tree shouting for help from Holly while Acorn just sat there with her back turned. In this case for Acorn, it seems to be more about proving a point and having possession than actually wanting to be a foster mom. So it looks like Acorn's holding her, but then Holly is grooming her. Finally, Acorn allowed Holly to join them, but she kept getting in between Holly and Nora and clutching Nora to her belly. Eventually, Acorn got tired of this game, and she moved on to Priya and Shemesh. Like the first fight, the second fight happened in the bushes, and so there was nothing for me to film. But after the second fight, it was very clear that Priya's friends, Survivor and Delilah, had actually stepped in and defended Priya and Shemesh from Acorn. Both Delilah and Survivor suffered some minor wounds. Why is she walking so weird with him? For the next half hour or so, you could see Survivor and Delilah strutting around, guarding Priya and Shemesh, chattering, recounting tales of their heroic battle. At this point, everything went back to normal and the monkeys went about their business. Priya, Shemesh, Nora, and Holly all hid up in the trees, grooming each other for comfort, while Acorn sat on the ground doing her favorite thing, munching on food. And finally, over in the Scro intro enclosure, little Janet is happier than she has ever been with her foster mom, Poland. And that's it for this episode of The Vervet Forest. I hope you enjoyed it. Check back every Thursday and Monday for brand new episodes. And if you want to volunteer at the Vervet Monkey Foundation, head over to vervet.co.za and click the link that says volunteer. There's a great PDF that has all sorts of information that can answer all of your questions. If you want to donate to the Vervet Monkey Foundation, then use paypal.me slash V-E-R-V-E-T. 
Also, if you'd like to see photos or videos of the monkeys in the interim between episodes, then check out our Instagram, which is at vervet underscore forest. See you all next time.